Muslims, if they were even mildly educated in their own history and the history of colonialism, they would be far more intelligent and far more dignified than they are. But sadly, Muslim parents tell their children, go study sciences, go study biology, go study mathematics, go study computer sciences, and they leave them stupid intellectually. They're morons beyond that, empty. And that's how you end up with the situation we end up with. So the khutbah I gave yesterday, I talked about the history of Native Americans and how I was talking about Biden's visit and how Biden's, when he stood next to Mahmoud Abbas and talked about the Palestinian peace with Israel and Palestinian rights, and basically he said what everyone was expecting him to say that, oh, we believe in two-state solution, you know, we're working for peace, Palestinians, uh, you know, basically Palestinians just be patient as you're being butchered and colonized. And, and I said that if you've read the history of Native Americans, you would know that precisely the way Peterson <laughs> talked to Muslims, the way Biden talks to Muslims, is identical to the way Americans talk to Native American tribes as they butchered them. Native Americans, if they resist colonialism, they're barbarian, barbarians and extremists. If they demand that their land not be stolen, they're barbarians and they don't understand law and they don't understand property rights and they don't understand civilizational values. The problem with Native Americans is that those Native Amer those barbaric Native Americans fight with one another. And they, you know, it, 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 they're infighting. It's evidence of their barbarism. But, but if they fight with us, there's only one response, complete butchery. We just butcher the heck out of them. Exactly what we did with Iraq and exactly what we did with Afghanistan, exactly what Israelis did with Palestine, exactly what the Indians are doing in Kashmir. And I said that we continued even till the, the very modern age that we're in. We continue to preach to Native American tribes about peace and about the wisdom of peace as we continue to steal their lands and colonize them and destroy their culture and completely obliterate them. Here is a sample of what you can read. And amazingly, the things that I'm going to tell you to read will not just tell you a great deal about Native American history and the, the colonial settler project that destroyed Native American cultures, but will also explain to you why someone like Jordan Peterson talks to Muslims the way he talks to them. The same material will open your eyes to the facts of life. So anyone that understand, wants to understand how colonialism consistently speaks to the colonized, how the speech, speech patterns of power to the disempowered have been historically and continue to be the starting point, in my opinion, is with Albert Mimi. Albert Mimi's one of the major intellectuals. He should have been a Muslim. I mean, I wish that intellectual was a Muslim, but again, Muslims have not produced any worthwhile intellectuals on colonialism. But Albert Mimi he has a, a start, I mean, 
the, he has a book called The Colonizer and the Colonized. And another book called Decolon Decolonization and the Decolonized. Both books are critical starting points for those who want to understand at least even the modern world in which we live in. Now, more to the issue of Native Americans, there's actually quite, there's a lot. Um, there's a book called the, An Indigenous People's History of the United States uh, by Roxanne Dunbar Ortez. It, it's, you, what you learn from that book is that history depends on the point of view that it's told from. And an indigenous history of the United States tells you the story of the development of the United States, but from the point of view of the people who paid the highest price for the existence of the United States. And these were the native cultures that were obliterated. There's another book called The Earth, the Earth Shall Weep, A History of Native America by James Wilson. Uh, a, a remarkable telling of the sheer brutality of settler colonialism and how it completely obliterated as it continued to, spa, to speak about human values and uh, civilization and whatever rights, it, it committed atrocity after atrocity after atrocity. So The Heirs Shall Weep by James Wilson. Another book called Unworthy Republic, The Disposition of Native Americans and the Road to Indian Territory by uh, Claudio Staunt, uh, S-T-A-U-N-T. Um, another book, uh, this one is a bit, um, it has more law, and I like it because of that. It's called The Other Slavery, The, Un the Uncovered Story of Indian Enslavement in America uh, by Andres Resendez. Um, while there was a movement to end black slavery, what is quite remarkable, but because the United States was founded as a settler colonial project. And because that project was about stealing the lands of native people and uh, dispossessing native people, there was never a parallel movement to actually in any way push back on the slavery that we imposed on Native Americans. In fact, very few people know that we enslaved Native Americans. So it's called The Other Slavery, The Uncovered Story of Indian Enslavement in America. Another book, American Settler Colonialism, A History uh, by W. Hickson. This is just a basic introduction to how the Americas were colonized, and especially the US and Canada. Um, and what a settler colonial project meant. Another book, Empire of the People, Settler Colonialism and the Foundations of Modern Democratic Thought by Adam Dahl. This is a, a, a very useful book because it, gives you a very different perspective on how and why democratic ideals emerged. That democratic ideals emerged as fundamentally wedded to racist ideas and ideas that at the same time it spoke about rights, ideas that without even noticing the hypocrisy would consistently destroy and eradicate native cultures as it stole their lands. And by, that book, by the way, talks a bit about Israel as well, about the settler colonial project in Israel by Adam Dahl. 
There's another book, Settler Colonialism, a Theoretical Overview. That's just a, a, a good introduction to the, to the Western civilization and what settler colonialism has meant in Western civilization. It's by uh, an Italian uh, academic called Veracini. Another book, uh, Settler Colonialism, Race and Law um, by Natsu Taylor Saito. Uh, he's a law professor. Settler Colonialism, Race and Law, it, it, it's, in my view, it's a must read for anyone who wants to understand how the, the legal order in the United States and Canada dealt with settler colonialism and why law ends up rubber stamping, rubber stamping uh, validating and justifying settler colonialism. Um, another book, Settler Memory, The Disavoyal of Indigenity and the Politics of Race in the United States by Kevin, Kevin Bronil. Uh, the last name is spelled B-R-U-Y-N-E-E-L. Settler Memory, The Disavowal of Indigenity and the Politics of Race in the United States. There's a lot that we can, but anyway, it's a, it's, um, okay, I'll, I'll, anyway. Uh, finally, I recommend Making and Breaking, there's a book called Making and Breaking Settler Peace, Five Centuries of Colonization in North America by Adam Barker. Uh, this book is what I was talking about in the khutbah when I said that it is a pattern where we talk about peace as we colonize the lands of indigenous people. So we always say, let's make peace, let's make peace. And we've done that with the Native Americans throughout. And at the same time, we break every peace agreement and steal more lands. And then we steal more lands and say, let's make peace. and and. This is a pattern, not just with Native Americans in the US and Canada, but this is a pattern with settler colonialism everywhere. So when Israelis and Americans keep talking about peace as they steal Palestinian lands, it's not anything new. When Peterson shows up and tells you, ah, oh, Abraham Accords Muslims, as they continue stealing lands, and as they invade Iraq and destroy Afghanistan and deal with the Muslim world as if the Muslim world is basically a blank space for colonialism, domination, and so on. That's nothing new. The problem with Muslims is the lack of education. If they read a book if Ham, someone like Hamza Yusuf, instead of pretending to be an intellectual, actually bothered to read a book, we wouldn't be in the mess we're in. So it is extremely aggravating because when you see how ignorant Muslims are, you just say, you know, what do you do? Okay.